Warning, the following video contains images of the dissection of a chicken embryo with the purpose of instructing biotechnology students on how to create primary culture. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to continue on our videos for our primary culture using chicken embryos. This would be the third video in the series. If you haven't watched the first ones, Go back and watch those before you watch this one. In the previous videos, we removed the chicken from an egg, sterilely, and we cleaned it and took off its head. Now we're going to dissect out its organs. Here I have some small petri dishes, and I'm pouring a small amount of PBS into the dish. This is so that the tissue does not stick to the plastic. We just want a small amount. Don't make a kiddie pool's worth of PBS in there. The objective of this lab is to make our own cell lines. We can make cell lines from virtually any tissue from an organism. It does take time and it does take expertise. In this video, I'm going to try and dissect as many tissues as I can so you get a good idea of what they look like and where they're located. As in the previous videos, sterility is very important. We'll be using a bead sterilizer set to 250 degrees Celsius to sterilize our equipment. Remember, only clean, dry items go into the steri. The scalpel blade is razor sharp, so make sure when you're wiping it, not to cut yourself. When you place the items into the steri, leave them in for only 10 seconds. If you leave it in longer, the heat can conduct up the metal, and when you pick it up, it can burn you. As you can see, I've left my forceps in there a bit long. Try not to do that. One thing to note as well, make sure all your dishes are covered up whenever possible. Only remove the lid when you're working with it. Now that our tools are clean, dry, and sterile, let them cool for a few seconds so we don't scorch the tissue. I'm going to start with the eye. There are two eyes. I will harvest both of them. I'm looking for the black part of the eye. The eye is filled with a viscous, clear fluid, similar to what's in your eye. We don't need that part. We want the black part. You can see the viscous part that has come out after the uh, eye has been cut out of the head. I'll obtain both the eyes and I will transfer both of them to the smaller petri dish. Try and remove any of the tissue that is not the eye before you transfer it over. We're going to leave behind that viscous fluid. There are no cells in there to culture. Remember to cover up your dishes when possible. Now that we've obtained the eyes, we will now go after the brain. The brain does not come out as a solid organ. It is very white and it comes out in parts kind of like jello. You can see there's a part, two parts out right there. Please note, any cells you will culture from the brain will not be neurons. There'll be glial cells or other cells that might be in the brain. Neurons are very difficult to culture. I'll transfer all the pieces of the brain over and then cover up the dish. In between each tissue, it's good practice to sterilize your instruments. This way you do not have cross-contamination. Cross-contamination is when you have one type of cell mixed with another type of cell. What I probably should have done is sterilize in between removing the eyes and removing the brain. Good teachable moment. Now we're going to go after the internal organs. We have to open up the body cavity to get at them. The head is pretty much done with now, so I'm going to get rid of that. I have a biohazard bag taped to the side of my bench and any items that come in contact with the chicken or are the chicken themselves must be placed into biohazard. I'm going to transfer the body of the embryo to a new dish. Again, I put a little bit of PBS in the bottom so that it does not stick to the plastic. I will then dump the old dish with the parts of the head remaining into my biohazard bag. I'll grab it by the leg 
transfer it over, cover it up, and drop this dish into my biohazard bag. Opening the body cavity can be a challenge. So watch carefully. I'm going to put the embryo onto its back. I'm going to angle the blade so the sharp part is pointing up and I'm going to stab it in the abdomen. I'm going to apply force upwards to try and cut through the body cavity and the skin itself. I've sterilized my instruments. I'm going to let them cool for a few seconds. Again, so I just don't scorch the tissue. This can be a challenge putting the embryo on its back. It's also a challenge sometimes to tell which side is uh, anterior, which side is posterior once the head is gone. You're looking at the posterior here of the embryo. So I'm going to try and open up the body cavity. Again, it can be a challenge. The sharp part of the blade is pointing upwards and I'm cutting into the tissue. There we go. Oh, there's the stomach poking out. Kind of cut through a bit more, a bit higher. That brownish bit is the liver. Many feathers on this chicken. We have now opened the body cavity. Let's take a closer look. This white part here in the middle of your screen, that would be the stomach. Here we have the liver, and above that, the heart. The heart is mostly covered right now. Let's open it up to get a better view. There it is. This right here is the heart. It's only connected at the top with some connective tissue. It looks white. There's no need to use a scalpel. You can just grab it with your forceps and pull and the heart should come right out. There we go. I will now transfer it into a separate smaller petri dish and harvest some more organs. The liver is quite soft and comes out in chunks. It is the brownish colored thing. So there's the liver. Oh, there's a bit of intestine I took with that should be a black dot on that. The black dot is the gallbladder. It's actually not black, it's very dark green. We'll cut the esophagus here and take the stomach. There's a little bit of intestine with that. Placing that in a separate dish and now we'll go after some intestine. Looks like very thin spaghetti. We'll place that into your dish. As you can see, there's not a lot of need for the scalpel blade at this point. The lungs are located up inside. I did not get those during this video. They're very small. The embryos never used them yet. I will go after the kidney. The kidney is actually very difficult to obtain. It's right in the back. It's easy to spot though. It's very small, but it's very, very red, full of blood vessels. Actually, you can see there's a bit of liver left behind there. Searching for the kidney right now. I see it right there. Let's pull it out. There it is. See how red it is? Very red and quite small. There should be two. I only found one in this embryo. Perhaps I was not looking hard enough. If you look at this embryo now, it is just a mess. But I've taken out all the organs I'm going to. Try and plan your dissection. If you just start cutting any which way you like, in the end, you'll just have a pile of chicken goo. There won't be any solid organs to obtain. There's one thing I'm going to obtain now that I haven't yet, and that is going to be the thigh muscle. To do this, I'm just going to cut the legs right off the chicken. Again, I'm going to sterilize my instruments so I can limit the cross-contamination. During the dissection, it is not extremely important you sterilize in between each tissue. But in the next step, when you're doing your disaggregation, it is necessary every time you switch from one tissue to another.
Notice the lids of all my petri dishes are closed. Why? To help keep everything sterile. Now my instruments are sterile and I will let them cool for a few seconds. I realized I need another dish. I need one more for the chicken legs. Again, I'm going to pour a small amount of PBS into the dish to prevent the tissue from sticking to the plastic. Remember this, this will be important in the next step. Here I see the thigh, I'm just going to cut it off right at the top, you can see a little chicken foot. What we want is the sort of drumstick meat that you would get. That's good skeletal muscle and students have a lot of success creating primary culture from that. In fact, the best tissues to create primary culture would be the uh, thigh muscle, the heart muscle, and the eye. A lot of success with that. All the other tissues are sort of hit and miss. So we're done all of that now. Let's take a closer look at each of the tissues. Here we have what's left of the chicken. Here we have our two uh, chicken thighs with the feet attached. Let me separate them so you can see them a bit better. Like a little drumstick, if I cut the foot off, you can imagine it. Here is our kidney. Our liver with that black gallbladder spot. Again, it's not black, it's green. I'll show you in the next video. Here we have the intestines. You can see they look like very thin spaghetti. Here we have the heart. If we look carefully and we have the SA note, it will actually beat. We don't see it beating there. Here we have the stomach with a little bit of intestine hanging off the bottom. Here we have parts of the brain. And finally, our eyes. We've harvested all the organs we're going to now. Let's get rid of all of this leftover chicken by tossing it into biohazard. In the next video, we'll do the disaggregation, breaking up those tissues into individual cells. Stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. You can click on this link to get to the next video in the series, Disaggregation, where we break down the whole tissues into individual cells. Thanks for watching. Until next time.